Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. I'm Sarah, a digital artist by profession, and someone who takes solace in the comfort of my home. I take pride in both my creative work and my modest yet warm abode. This made the decision to marry a significant one for me. Mark, a confident professional working in a reputable company, appeared to be the perfect choice. Charming, intelligent, and hailing from a respectable family. Little did I know, appearances can be deceiving. The first cracks in what I thought was an ideal life surfaced during the wedding planning process. It became a constant power struggle between me and Mark's traditional-minded mother, Alice. She insisted on a grand, old-fashioned wedding with elaborate floral arrangements, fancy table settings, and uncomfortable family traditions. As the wedding day approached, anxiety set in. Despite my efforts to maintain a joyful facade, something felt off. Mark seemed distant, like a spectator at his own wedding. However, what truly stung was Alice's behavior. Stepping out of the car in my carefully chosen wedding dress, I felt her judgmental eyes scrutinizing everything from my attire to my complexion. In a cold tone, she criticized my dress, leaving me embarrassed. Mark remained silent, failing to defend me. As the day unfolded, Alice became determined to find fault in every detail, the music, the food, and even my 12-year-old sister's table manners. Attempting to intervene and defend my sister only led to Alice asserting that discipline starts young, as if I needed correction. During the toast, Alice couldn't conceal her disapproval, offering wishes for a joy-filled life that her eyes betrayed as insincere. Looking to Mark for support, I found none. He avoided my gaze, making me realize that the love we spoke of may have been a facade. It became clear that I was alone in this marriage, caught between a husband unwilling to stand by me and a mother-in-law determined to make my life miserable. Our wedding day, meant to mark the beginning of a happy life together, felt more like the opening chapter of a somber tale as we departed for our honeymoon. I clutched my bouquet tightly, using it as a makeshift shield, fully aware that more challenges lay ahead. The wedding, instead of being a joyous celebration, felt like a forewarning of the difficulties that awaited us. After a strangely quiet honeymoon, Mark and I moved into my house. Initially excited about the prospect of married life filled with love and happiness, my optimism waned when I realized that Alice, Mark's mother, considered my home a territory she needed to control. Within a few weeks of our marriage, Alice started making unannounced visits, asserting herself as if she owned the place. Each visit was rife with criticism and passive-aggressive comments, turning my once peaceful home into a battleground. One evening, I eagerly prepared dinner using a new recipe I had found online, hoping to share it with Mark. However, when Alice saw it, she wrinkled her nose and insulted my cooking skills. Despite my attempts to explain, she mocked me, and to my dismay, Mark sided with her. On another occasion, Alice criticized my living room decorations, claiming they clashed with the furniture. Despite the effort I had put into it, she made fun of my choices, and once again, Mark didn't stand up for me. Instead, he suggested that I could use Alice's help next time, making me feel like my home was being taken over. The painful realization struck me that the man who promised to support me not only allowed this emotional harm, but also joined in. Feeling utterly alone, I couldn't comprehend the depth of the isolation I experienced. Both Mark and Alice seemed determined to disrupt the peace I had cherished in my home. Hoping for improvement, I longed for Mark's support, and I naively believed that Alice might grow tired of bitterness. However, my hopes were shattered when one evening, Alice arrived at our door with bags and boxes, declaring that she was moving in with us. Shocked, I questioned Mark about this decision, but he seemed fine with it. As Alice began unpacking, treating her move as a final decision, 
I pulled Mark aside, my hands shaking with a mix of anger and disbelief. I expressed to him that it simply couldn't happen. Our marriage was already strained, and Alice moving in would only exacerbate the situation. Mark sided with his mother, insisting that we needed to adjust to her presence. Frustrated, I questioned when he would adjust for me and stand up for our home and marriage. Mark avoided my gaze, claiming it would be rude to ask her to leave. And so, Alice moved in, plunging me deeper into my nightmare. Her relentless criticism extended to everything, from how I arranged the furniture to how I did the laundry, and even how I breathed. Mark remained silent, allowing her behavior to persist. Yet, it wasn't just the constant nitpicking that wore me down. I stumbled upon a bag of prescription medications hidden in the kitchen one day. Pills for anxiety, depression, and sleep disorders. When I confronted Alice about it, she became angry, asserting that I had no right to snoop around. Mark sided with her, claiming they were her private matters. It was a colossal betrayal, leaving me feeling numb. It became evident that Alice wasn't merely a difficult mother-in-law. She was akin to a predator, dismantling my defenses and seizing control of my life. Mark wasn't just distant or uninterested. He was part of the problem, contributing to the destruction of our marriage. In that moment, as I'd witnessed Alice's smug smile and Mark avoiding my gaze, I made a pivotal decision. I refused to be a passive spectator to this tragedy unfolding before me. It was time to take charge of my life, even if it meant distancing myself from those who were supposed to be my family. However, fate had another surprise in store for me, pushing me to finally put an end to the act my life had become. After Alice unexpectedly moved into my home, my life transformed into a never-ending nightmare. She scrutinized my every move, critiqued me for the smallest things, and her presence loomed over me like a dark cloud. Personal attacks became the norm, insulting my love, looks, intelligence, and even questioning my abilities as a spouse. One evening in the living room, Alice launched an attack on my career, or what she perceived as a lack thereof. According to her, a good wife should have a job, and she doubted I could do anything worthwhile. I defended myself, asserting that I did indeed have a job, and my income played a crucial role in our household. However, Alice remained unconvinced, questioning why we resided in my modest house instead of a grander one that reflected her son's dignity. Before I could respond, Mark, who had been absorbed in his phone, sided with his mother. He remarked that I could do more, and we could aspire to a better life. It stung deeply, feeling like a profound betrayal. Mark left the room, and in a hushed tone, Alice whispered, He'll always be my son. You're just the girl he settled for. Turning away, I grappled with a mix of anger and embarrassment. As I gazed at our wedding photo, I pondered how my love story had transformed into a cruel drama. The nightmare intensified when I discovered an unidentified packet of pills hidden in the kitchen. Confronting Alice led to her anger, dismissing it as none of my business. When Mark entered the room, he scolded me for snooping, revealing there was no us in this marriage. Mark wasn't merely failing to protect me, he was taking Alice's side. I felt like a stranger in my own home, suffocating under their combined disapproval. Yet their actions fueled my determination not to be broken. I would endure this nightmare. Then, an unexpected opportunity arose. Mark's friend Jake invited us to a party. And despite my reservations, I was coerced into attending. The request felt more like an order, and we found ourselves at Jake's lavish house. The party offered a stark contrast to the tense atmosphere at home providing a temporary escape from Alice's grip and the strained relationship with Mark. Laughter filled the air, music played, and for a brief moment, I could almost forget the daily battles and criticisms. As the evening unfolded, I found myself conversing with Jake, Mark's friend, and the host of the party. Jake's friendly and approachable demeanor sharply contrasted with Alice's cold judgment. We discussed various topics, 
and engaging in a conversation free from criticisms and insults felt refreshing. Jake suggested a party game, a welcome change from the toxic atmosphere at home, and I hesitantly agreed. During the game, I shared a story from the early days of our marriage, highlighting the challenges and lessons we had learned. The room echoed with laughter as I recounted some of the humorous mishaps we had experienced. It felt liberating to share a part of our story, even if only in a game. Afterward, Jake pulled me aside, expressing concern about my situation at home. He had observed the tension and encouraged me to stand up for myself, refusing to let them mistreat me further. His words were a glimmer of hope in the darkness that had enveloped me for so long. Over the next few weeks, as I pondered my life and the choices I had made, I came to the realization that I deserved better than the constant emotional abuse and the suffocating feeling of being trapped in my own home. With Jake's support and encouragement, I took small steps toward reclaiming control over my life. I began attending therapy sessions to build my self-esteem and develop strategies for navigating the toxic dynamics in my marriage. The journey wasn't without its challenges and setbacks, but my determination to break free from the cycle of abuse and regain my sense of self-worth remained unwavering. Over time, I engaged in candid conversations with Mark about the need for change in our relationship. It was a difficult process, but he gradually recognized the toll that Alice's presence and his own indifference had taken on our marriage. Together, we started setting boundaries and actively worked on improving our communication. The path to reclaiming my life was challenging, but it was a journey I was resolute in pursuing. With the support of friends like Jake and newfound determination, I began rebuilding my self-confidence and finding my voice. Step by step, I knew I had the strength to overcome the nightmare that had consumed my life for far too long. During the first half hour of the party, everything seemed okay. People laughed, clinked glasses, and music filled the air. However, as the night progressed, I noticed Mark growing more distant. He spent more time with others than with me, and when our eyes met, he seemed annoyed. Eventually, Mark disappeared, and my search for him among the guests proved unsuccessful. Turning to less crowded areas of the house, I heard a soft giggle followed by Mark's unmistakable voice. My heart sank even before I reached the door where the sounds emanated. Taking a deep breath, I opened the door to find Mark with another woman. They were oblivious to my presence for what felt like an eternity. When they finally noticed, Mark's face displayed annoyance rather than guilt or regret. He snapped at me, questioning my apparent lack of courtesy and knocking. Unable to contain my anger, I retorted, knocking? Are you serious? What are you doing, Mark? Trembling not with sadness but fiery rage, I witnessed his face turn red, a mix of embarrassment and anger. He suggested we discuss it at home, but I was done talking. Unable to endure further humiliation, abuse, and disrespect, I stormed out, and Mark neither followed nor called out to me. I returned home alone, my mind racing but surprisingly clear. A line had been crossed, a boundary broken. The next morning, Mark acted as if nothing had happened. It was then that Alice, always ready to take advantage of the situation, decided to speak up. She criticized me for embarrassing myself and Mark. That was the last straw. I couldn't take it anymore. Embarrassment. You have the audacity to talk to me about embarrassment after everything you and your son have done. I shot back at her, fueled by months of anger and frustration. Alice threatened to call the police, but I didn't back down. Go ahead, I said as I dialed my own number into the phone. They might be interested in the package in the kitchen cupboard. Mark looked puzzled, then alarmed. But before he could say anything, the doorbell rang. As I opened the door for the police officers, a strange calm washed over me. It was as if all the chaos and pain had led to this moment of clarity. My nightmare was about to end, and theirs was about to begin. The police officers were professional but puzzled. They said they received a call about a disturbance, and I confirmed it, leading them to the kitchen cupboard. 
Inside, I showed them the packet of pills. Mark panicked and asked his mother what she had done. The officers turned to Alice. Ma'am, you'll need to come with us, one of them said. Alice stammered, saying the pills weren't hers, but the officer insisted she come. She shot me a look filled with rage as they took her away in handcuffs. I looked at Mark, who appeared to be on the verge of falling apart. Is this what you wanted, Sarah? To break up this family? He asked. I couldn't believe it. Destroy this family? I repeated, surprised. Mark, you and your mom ruined this family long before today. You cheated on me, belittled me, and let your mom mistreat me in my own home. The damage was your doing, not mine. He stared at me, his eyes narrowing. So what now? Do you want a divorce? He asked. I replied firmly. For the first time, Mark, it's not about what you or your mom want. It's about what I deserve, and yes, I deserve better than this fake marriage. Within weeks, we started divorce proceedings. It wasn't easy, but it was necessary. During the trial, both Mark and Alice faced consequences. Mark was revealed as someone who enabled his mom's behavior, and Alice received a five-year prison sentence for having illegal substances. Sitting in the courtroom, I felt a mix of emotions. Victory, yes, but also a deep sadness for what our family could have been. Mark avoided my gaze, and I realized the man I had married was a stranger, but I was finally free. Leaving the courtroom, I walked into the sunlight and understood that this was not just an ending, but also a new beginning. In the years that followed, I focused on rediscovering myself and healing. Though the scars remained, they reminded me of my own strength, resilience, and self-worth. The nightmare was over, and the lessons I'd learned would stay with me for life. I had faced the worst and survived, emerging as a woman who would never again settle for anything less than what she deserved.